Hello everybody, it's Stephen here for The Idiot Quilter and welcome to my weekly episode. This is episode 135 for October the 5th, 2021. And I hope everybody's had a very creative week and you're looking forward to the next week of creativity. So let's see what I've been doing. So Thanksgiving is coming up here in Canada uh, this coming weekend. And my sister's invited Walter and I over to her place for a uh, Thanksgiving dinner, which will be really nice because we haven't been over to my sister's place in quite some time. Um, they're all double vaxxed there, so are we. So everybody is taking their precautions as we should be. Um, so I thought I'd take her a little hostess gift, and this is what I've made. Now, you might wonder what this is. Well, I'm going to show you. First of all, I want to show you the ribbon. Let's take it off here. Some time ago, a few years ago, uh, brother came out with a P-Touch, a label maker that does ribbons as well as regular labels. So I bought it. Of course I bought it. And I don't use it that often, but this is the kind of thing it does. So you can see here on the ribbon, it says Happy Thanksgiving. And I have several different colors of ribbons that I can use in this machine. I'm not even sure if you can get this machine anymore because I haven't heard that much about it. So I'm really not sure. But um it's it's kind of nice to have if you want to you know personalize a gift or something uh in the outside decorations of it you know wrap up a box what like what i've done here you can create this but this is not what i wanted to show you specifically what i wanted to show you specifically are these tea towels that i embroidered for my sister and made now again a few months ago i got this idea that i was going to make tea towels for us because ours are getting kind of ratty as tea towels do and um, I went online, and I can't remember what online store it was, but they had tea towel fabric. Now, they didn't have a lot to pick from. They only had uh, this style, and they had it in gray, and I think they had it in sort of a, a pale blue or something like that. So I bought a meter of both, and uh, I never got around to making new tea towels. So I thought this might be kind of nice for my sister. So I went on to uh, Embroidery Online, OESD, and uh, picked up a couple of Halloween, not Halloween, Thanksgiving designs. And this is one of them. It says thanks. And this does open up full size tea towel, just so you see that I didn't make it that tiny. And I embroidered that onto the tea towel. I made her two actually, one that has says thanks, and this one has a scarecrow on it as well. So they're not just specifically for Thanksgiving. They could be used as fall decor as well. But you know, everybody can use tea towels. So that's what I thought I would make my sister. Um, also, uh, what I've been working on is, well, Halloween. Yes, it's only the first part of October. But, you know, before we know it, bang, we're into Halloween. So I decided uh, to get out my Halloween decorations. And you know I've been doing some 3D printing of Halloween decorations and some more in the hoop embroidery. And so I went to town and I decorated. So it looks cool. I really think it looks cool. And I decided, you know, you put that much work into something, you might want to keep them out for a little longer than just a week before Halloween or something like that. Um, so I did. So I've taken a video showing you my family room and all the decorations I have in there, um, including my Halloween quilt, which we'll come to in, uh, later on in today's uh, episode. And uh, the two Halloween banners, which I made some time ago. I've had them for maybe a year, maybe two years, actually. And they're on the doors of my house, the front doors of my house. So I'm going to insert that video here. So I thought I'd show you my Halloween decorations for this year. This is my coffee table in my family room. And you can see I have my embroidered houses uh, that I made last year. And then I've added some lights to those. Over in the far corner is a Halloween pumpkin I embroidered last year. And then some 3D objects that I printed this year. And I've scattered some little fake leaves under those. Now this was my latest project this year, which were these Halloween lanterns, which you can see have a ghostly glow to them with the lights. All the lights are battery operated and have a remote. And this is the centerpiece for the table, another one of those lanterns and some more 3D printed items, some skulls and a big white ghost. Plus the table runner is one that I embroidered about a year or so ago as well. Now we go all the way around the room and we go back to this center display and that's the back of it. 
But here on this table, another one of those embroidered Halloween lanterns and uh, a couple, a 3D printed Frankenstein head and an embroidered cauldron. And I filled them with candy kisses, more for the display than to be eaten. But then again, we'll probably eat them as well. Outside of the house, I put up two uh, banners I made a year ago. They're a combination of quilting and embroidery. And all the little figures that are around it are also all in the hoop applique or um, in the case of the skeleton, a freestanding lace uh, creation done in the embroidery machine as well. So I'm all ready for Halloween, as you can see, with my banners up on the doors and my decorations inside the house. So I thought you might want to take a look at. Now in that video, uh, I don't think I really touched upon it, but on the back of my love seat is a quilt. It's a Halloween quilt. I made that and finished it uh, this past week. And I did quilt it on the new long arm machine on Lucy. And I used a pantograph for that. And so I was happy with the way it turned out because really <laughs> doing a pantograph, although I have done them before, I had to review the instructions for how to set it all up. So I did, and I think it turned out quite nice. So I have the pattern that I used for that, and uh, I talk a little bit more about the construction of it um, in this little video clip that I'm going to insert here. I quilted my first quilt on Lucy this week, and I'm very pleased with it. I have had this pattern for a while and a week ago I cut out all the pieces for it and it's called ladders but it uses this panel that you can see right here in the middle and I did buy this pattern uh, this panel but I did not buy the fabrics I used different Halloween fabrics some of them I already had in my stash and some of them I bought uh, specifically for this pattern but here's the pattern and I've put the link for it in the show notes below it's pretty basic uh, pretty simple and you can do this really really quickly um, it cost me you can get it as a physical uh, pattern or a digital download uh, this is the physical pattern at 1050 uh, American and I believe it's about nine dollars for the digital download um, that's in American dollars as well so I ordered it, I got everything prepped, and I am happy to say I finished the quilt. And I'm going to show that to you right here. And there it is. And uh, I think it turned out pretty good. Uh, it's about uh, 55 inches by about, I think about 75 or 80 inches. Not absolutely sure on that. Um, you can see I had the panel, but then I added my own fabrics to it. And I kind of like my fabrics. A little better um, it's definitely very Halloweeny but here's what I want it to show you is my quilting get in here close so the way I did this particular quilting was I used my brand new Lucy my long arm machine and I used uh, I'm not sure what this pattern is called but it's a, a pantograph Pantograph, if you're not familiar with them, is just a really long scroll of paper with the design drawn out on it. And you use the laser light at the back of your long arm machine. And there's handles at the back as well as on the front of the machine. And you just essentially trace uh, what's on that pattern. Um, and you get very good looking uh, quilting. This isn't absolutely perfect, but then again, it's pretty darn close. Better than what I could have done if I tried to do this by free motion. But um, the one thing is I, I used a relatively light color. It, it looks sort of like white or gray on this picture, but it's actually a light goldy yellow color. And I used a tan color on the back, which it really doesn't show up on the back of the fabric. And I don't have a picture of the back of this, but I just used some... Uh, uh, basic orange fabric. I did have to piece the back for this. And I also, because I didn't have uh, a darker colored bobbins at this point in time, I will have soon, I decided to go with the lighter tan uh, just in case I blew it, made a few mistakes, no one would notice it. But I didn't blow it. That's the beauty of the long arm and using a, a pantograph. It comes out very nice. So I'm very pleased with the way my Halloween quilt uh, turned out. And it's going to be part of this year's decorations uh, for the fall. Um, about to put up my Halloween decorations. Well, actually, at the time of when you see this, I already have them up and 
you've seen a video already of my Halloween decorations. So yeah, that one's called Ladders. Um, and it's a great quick design, which you can probably find fabric for it in your scrap pile or in your stash. So as you know, speaking of another holiday season, Christmas, Christmas will be here before you know it as well. What, two months away? Really? <laughs> Time flies, as I said. Um, but I have made those Christmas table toppers, and I've already talked to you about those and shown those to you, and I made the mug rugs, and I've made the pin cushions, and I've made the little gnomes and everything. So my little Christmas packages that I'm making uh, for the people at Ultimate Sewing, hope they don't watch this because then they'll know, um, are done. However, I thought it might be nice to have a little tag on the bag as well whenever I get the bags. Um, I'm not making those. Um, so I made these embroidered lighting, lighting, lighting. There, you get a little better look at it. Now I haven't put the little ribbon on it yet to attach it to the package, um, but that's what they look like. Did them all in the hoop and they have a backing on them as well just made from scrap fabric really but I made a bunch of these and um, they were pretty fast to make um, I did six at a time uh, in the hoop and I think six at a time took about 45 minutes to uh, stitch out so yeah I'm getting ready for Christmas uh, so what's coming up what am I doing well I do have a Christmas quilt actually I have two Christmas quilts Yesterday, I put the one Christmas quilt, which is the one I did show this to you some time ago. I had an embroidered applique piece in the center of it, which now in hindsight, when you're going to quilt something and if you're not going to do like completely free motion on it, mm, makes it a little tricky. But I threw it on Lucy yesterday and I did a pantograph on it too. I didn't use a... um. Christmas pantograph uh, because I didn't have one and when I went down to Whirls and Swirls which is my local long arm store uh, she didn't really have anything that was Christmas either in stock. Um, I did order one from Urban Elements which has tons and tons of pantographs and some of them are digital so you can download them and print them out yourself and then put them together and I did that with a Christmas design but I just wasn't sure if it was going to work or not. So I ended up using a different design, which is some very stylized kind of leaves, kind of oak leaves, but hard to tell. And they do look kind of Christmassy because the way they've been drawn, they look sort of like a uh, holly. So I used that and I did it on the, uh, did it as a pantograph. And I think it turned out okay. Now I had some problems with Lucy. Well, I don't know if it was Lucy or me, probably more me than Lucy. Um, so I did get it done, though. I solved, I think, the problem I was having or figured out what I was doing wrong. And uh, now I have to square up the quilt and bind it. And once that's done, I'll show it to you. Um, I think it turned out OK, though. And that applique that I was mentioning, I just quilted over top of it because it was a fairly open design for the quilting. And uh, it looks fine on that. But in the future, note to self, don't put an applique, an embroidered applique, onto a quilt until after you've quilted it. Yes, I think that would make life a little easier if I did that. So as I said, it's not quite completely finished. So next week, it should be finished by next week. I'll show it then. Now, the second Christmas quilt I have is actually a scrappy quilt. Um, the first one is a gift. The next one isn't really. It's just for me to play around with, get rid of some of my Christmas stash scraps. And I am thinking that I might try my hand at just doing some form of free motion quilting on the long arm, of course, uh, on that one, as opposed to a pantograph. Um, you know, because it's not a quilt that I'm going to give as a gift. And, you know, what the heck. It was just made from scraps. If I kind of blow it, it's no big deal. So we'll see. So that's a project as well. So there's always projects. I'm also going to be working on a Christmas table runner 
that I am going to give as a gift if it turns out okay. And it's a pattern I showed you a couple of weeks ago called the braided twist, kind of a circular pattern to it. And I have the fabric picked out for it and I have everything laid out. Uh, so later today, I'm planning to cut the fabric up for that that I need to cut up because I'd like to kind of work on it tomorrow because tomorrow is Craft and Chat. Yes, the first Wednesday of the month is Craft and Chat. Um, this is a Zoom event, starts at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, runs until about 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a come as you go. It's an opportunity for you for a few hours to be able to concentrate on working on some projects or catching up on some projects in whatever field of art you endeavor in to. That's a weird sentence. Um, so it doesn't have to be quilting and sewing. It can be paper crafting, art journaling, scrapbooking, all of that kind of thing. Now I have my regulars that come to this every month, which is great. Um, you know, we've really become kind of a nice group of friends, but we are not a closed group. We are open to all. So if you've never been to one before, don't be shy. Join us. We do not bite. Very supportive, very friendly, very inspiring. It's just a great few hours of fun with friends. So that's tomorrow at 1 p.m., Wednesday, October the 6th, 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And the link to it is in uh, the show notes uh, below. Hope to see you there. Okay, that was a little plug for that. Wasn't really the section where I was going to talk about it, but I thought it was it fell in with what I was talking about as far as my uh, what I've been working on. So what's happening next? Well, not a heck of a lot, really. I'm always busy. I always find things to do. You know, my philosophy of life is life's too short. You got to do it all. So, um, yeah, that's my philosophy. So, uh, what's been happening? Well, nothing much with me. I mean, yes, yeah, so I've been playing with the Lucy and that kind of thing. And um, I do intend, I set up cameras yesterday well, in the Lucy room. She has her own room, as you know to uh, maybe not do tutorials as such, but just take you on my adventure as I learn to use Lucy. I did some uh, videotaping yesterday, videotaping, recording yesterday. Um, then I ran into some problems and I'm really not sure if I'm going to use any of that footage or not. I might um, I have to do some major editing of it, not because I've made mistakes, because you know me, I like to show you my mistakes, but because the segments are relatively long. Um, the way I have my camera set up in that particular room, I don't have easy access to my computer to be able to, you know, pause something or stop something as I'm doing it. So basically these ones, it's just on and away it goes and then I'll have to edit it afterwards. And I do not like editing. So yeah, we'll see. We'll see about that. Uh, anyways, Walter was supposed to have a class at Ultimate Sewing this week. Um, back before COVID, we had signed up for a lot of different classes, as we do, and then they all got, you know, put on hold because of COVID. Well, now um, things have changed in the restrictions and that kind of thing, and we've talked about this on my various platforms here before, so I'm not going to get into all of that. But uh, his class was supposed to start this week, but he decided not to take it. He just is too busy. He's working, prepping for another class he's taking with uh, Brendan who you're going to meet Brendan later on today in this episode. Um, it's the classes he takes usually every Monday night. Now they're, a bit, they're on a bit of a hiatus right now because uh, Brendan has uh, some classes he himself is taking with, I believe, Ron Collins, which is uh, a representative of Genomi, but he is a designer. Uh, he designs men's fashions and women's fashions, and he is a real um, guru in the sewing or garment sewing uh, area. So Brendan's taking a class with him right now, I think, and then he'll come back and I think they're going to be making um, some kind of pants or something, I think. But they have to make something called a muslin. Muslin? Oops. <laughs> muslin. Okay. You know, it's a fabric. And I guess it's so you can size the garment. I really don't know. Okay. Maybe I'll get Walter to talk about that in a little bit more detail on the next So Chatty. But um, anyways, uh, 
So he had that to do, and uh, he was just too busy, and I think a little apprehensive about, you know, getting back into the swing of taking classes. Uh, we're still in COVID, so, you know, I, I am debating too. I have a class that starts in November sometime, and well, we'll wait and see how things are, but I have a feeling that I'm not going to be taking that class either. Um, Shirley understands, and she actually gave Ultra Restore credit for the money he'd already paid for the class. I mean, you know, Shirley understands, and she's great. You know, Shirley's not, you know, other places might have just kept the money. You know, not Shirley. She gives you your money back or restore credit, and restore credit is just fine. I'll certainly be using it. Um, but I'm just still a little uncomfortable about um, doing that kind of thing. And speaking, okay, so what else that went on this past week? Well, we had a special visit. Here I am talking about, you know, being worried about going to a class, and I had people over for dinner. Now, they are double vaxxed. They come from Alberta. Some of you may know who I'm talking about. Kim Jamison Hurst and her husband, Gary, who own and operate the online membership site called The Quilter's Way. And you've heard me talk many times about The Quilter's Way because I am what is classified as a founding member, which means I paid my dues early <laughs> for it. And But I love it. Absolutely love it. And if you are a quilter, especially if you're a new quilter, or if you're somebody looking for a community, a supportive community, then you should join up with The Quilter's Way. And you just do a search in Google, you'll find it. Uh, Kim has a YouTube channel as well called Chatterbox Quilts, and she does mention it on there as well. But it is a lot of fun. Well, I met Kim in person several years ago when she was just getting The Quilter's Way underway. And uh, she is a native of Ontario, her and her husband, but they have lived out in Alberta, I think, for over 30 years. Um, so she was coming out here for a visit, for a little holiday, um, to visit her parents because it's her 65th wedding anniversary. So, of course, when we knew she was coming out here, we invited her to dinner, her and her husband, and they came here and we spent a, a great uh, afternoon, Saturday and evening, with the two of them. And we had a lot of fun, we had a lot of wine, and it was great. It was great seeing them. Um, and I hope someday that we'll be able to, when we can travel again, our plan is to travel out, out to the West Coast as well. And of course, we'll be stopping in in Alberta to see Kim and her husband in their natural habitat as well. But that was really, really nice. Um, we felt so civilized. Held a lot of it too. We haven't had people here for dinner in literally years. Literally years. I mean, we hadn't had anybody over for dinner before COVID for a while. And so we're a little rusty. I mean, I like having people over for dinner. Um, although, you know, I'm not so fond about the cleanup or the setup, <laughs> all that. I need servants. I just need servants. Okay, so. I do have a little bit of a, a demo this week for you that involves Lucy. Um, putting in casings. Now, what are casings? Well, there are several different ways you can lay out a quilt in preparation for quilting on your long arm. The way that we have been shown by Tracy at Whirls and Swirls, who's an APQS uh, representative, uh, sales personnel uh, technician as well, She's one-stop shopping. Um, she showed us uh, the way she does it, and she believes it's the fastest way. And so that's the way I do it. It's called a full float. So essentially, you're only attaching your backing fabric to the long arm, and you are floating on top of your backing fabric, your batting, and your quilt top. Now, some people pin it. That's the most common way, I suppose. But there is another way. And again, Tracy introduced us to this. And she thinks it's more efficient. And that is to basically get these things called red snappers that are plastic tubing that clamp on to the leaders, the canvas leaders that hold the quilt onto the machine. And they just snap on. But before you can use those, we, we have ordered these from Tracy and got them. Um, you have to put in a casing 
in the ends of the leaders so that you can slip in these long red tools look like doweling okay except they're plastic and they go inside bat and then you clamp on the outside with that i know this probably isn't making a lot of sense so i hope this little video that i created of this showing you what we did will make some sense so i'll put that in here so we're about to sew in the casings for the renee what are they called? Renee's Red, Sna Red Snappers. Red Snappers. And Walter is marking a ruler here with painter's tape as a guide to um, how we stitch across these leaders. And so you don't take the leaders off the machine. You leave them on here. And this is what I'm talking about. These are, these are the leaders right here. Do you have um, a marking pen? I have that... Uh... One. So what Walter is doing right now is he's got a ruler marked with a, was it one and three quarter inches? Yeah. And he's drawing a line. He's using the painter's tape as a guide along the edge here of the leader. And he's drawing a line that is one and three quarter inches from that edge all the way down this leader. And that's going to be our sewing guide line. And the whole thing that he's doing is, once he gets the line drawn and we sew the, that piece over, we'll bring the edge of this to the line, that will create a pocket or a casing for the dowel pieces to go through. And that casing, that pocket is about three quarters of an inch in width, with a little bit of an allowance for the actual sewing onto it. So now we have a line drawn all the way down from one end to the other end of the leader. And what Walter's doing now is he's just clamping it. It's holding the canvas over so that the edge of it touches that line. And he's clamping it with wonder clips. And then basically we'll sew about what? A quarter of an inch from... No, actually it's like an eighth of an inch. An eighth of an inch from the edge. And that makes the casing. So as you can see, Walter has the clips here holding this folded piece over. And he's just about done at the other end. I'm just gonna do some checking. And now he's going to double check to see, make sure everything is nice and even. And so he checks with his ruler that he put the painter's tape on, just so it's easier to see the line. That's what one and a half or one and three quarters. Actually, you have an extra half inch on that ruler edge. Mm -hmm. You should turn it over. Should be a little bit more than that. that's right. Okay, so it's just verifying the measurements to make sure everything is nice and straight. Now to hold the canvas uh, taunt we've put these pieces on here with the clamps that are usually done on the edges of your ends of your quilt. And they're pinned here so that you can release it as you go down with the sewing part and they'll just slide along and you can reclamp them. And using a pin instead of clamps because the pin holds a little better than clamps since this is a very stretchy, pliable strap. Now this part's very tricky. You're not gonna get a perfectly straight stitch and you have to sew about an eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric. And because you can't really use the channel locks to keep it in a straight line, you just gotta kinda of eyeball it and do it and use your hand. So this takes a bit of doing. Not particularly worried about how straight the stitch looks because this is functional, this is not decorative. Well, it started out a little rough, but with a little practice, it gets a little better. But like I said, this is not decorative or anything, so it doesn't matter. This is a utility, utility stitch. So it just has to hold the casing shut. It doesn't have to look pretty. We wanted it to, to not show up as much. We probably should have switched our thread from green to maybe a tan or something. But again, it doesn't matter. So the channel on the one leader is now sewn. It's pretty. 
Well, it started off being kind of rough, and then as I went then it on, got better at it. As I went on, it got a little better. Yeah, but nobody sees these, and it's not for decorative purposes, anyways. It's totally functional. And now we're putting in the stays or the dowlings or whatever you want to call them, dowels. And uh, they go down through those channels and that's what you clamp these halves to once you have your quilt or whatever in those. I think that's two that I have out here. Well, anyway, you get the idea. We'll show you more in a bit. Well, we now have, after some struggle, the stays inside the casing all the way down here to this end. So now we have to do that roller. Maybe we'll be faster because we've done one already. And when I say we, I mean Walter. Round two. This is the other uh, leader. And uh, Walter has discovered that the C clamps that we have with this are coming in kind of handy for why? Well, it kept flopping. The, the cover on the other end kept flopping down and it was giving me a hard time measuring it with the ruler. So, so C clamps kept it steady, did it? Yeah, it kept both sides up so that I could, it was easier to measure. You know, if we do this on about five more machines, we can start a business. We can zip right through and put people's you castings in. Need your in. red snappers put yeah. in. Need your red snapper put in? You need your red. <laughs> okay, there's probably a joke in there somewhere. This time around, we found a better way to do this, which we already oh, knew. Okay, maybe we didn't. Is Walter shitting? See this plastic plate here? This is meant for the ruler foot. And in Tracy's video, which we've been watching for how to do this, she uses this plate. But we put the plate on wrong. So it was causing us a lot of grief. So we just took it off and did it without the plate, which made things, I think, a little bit more difficult. This looks like it's making things, now that we know how to put it on the proper way, a little easier. Do you think it's easier, Walter? Maybe. Maybe, he says. Well, whatever. Of course, practice makes perfect, right? Just moving at the speed of light now. Well, maybe not. Okay, so now we're trying to uh, put the red snappers on. So they recommend to put the small ones on first, just to hold your quilt in place, then put your longer ones on. Tracy actually suggested you kind of do it with your palm of your hand and curve it. Okay, well. Well, that's not the palm of your hand. We'll have to have an anatomy lesson. I'm sure this gets easier after the 10th quilt. Okay. Of a bulge in the middle. It's not. Is that attached? Yeah, I guess it is. Okay. Uh, this is where maybe the short ones come in. Handy. Okay, so you take those little ones off. Or you can just leave the little ones on. And because they're only well, I suppose for this, because this is just a practice piece. This is just a piece of random fabric. Okay, so now we've got them clamped on here. Boy, they're snug. Hmm. Well, they're supposed to be snug. Maybe this is what some people were saying in the comments. What they didn't like about these. I don't know. But I'm sure it's just a question of getting used to how this works. Still better than pins. Okay, so we get the last little piece there. They come in different lengths. The package had longer ones, shorter ones, little bits. Mm -hmm. So you figure it out. 
Yeah. All right, so that's supposedly on there now. So as I said, there will be more videos in the future about Lucy. I am kind of thinking of starting, do I need to start another one? Another platform here on YouTube for Lucy, uh, you know, calling it um, Fun with Lucy or something like that. Uh, and my intent is not to be a, a series of tutorials as much as it to be like just showing you what I learn as time goes by. I don't know. That's just an idea right now. It may never come to fruition. But there will be other times when I will show you things about Lucy and probably will do them either here in the Idiot Quilter or on So Chatty. Okay, so what's that taking me to? Subscribers Quilt of the Week. And this one is from a regular uh, Jackie Sparks. And I'm going to insert that little video here. This week's subscribers quilt is by Jackie Sparks. And Jackie writes, in your last blog on August the 31st, you asked if some of your subscribers would like to share a picture of one of their projects. I thought I would send you a picture of my latest quilt. It is one that challenged me, not because it was hard, but because it was small. The half square triangles are two inches unfinished. The pattern is very detailed and easy to follow. It's by Miss Rosie's Quilt Company and called Picnic, made with charm squares. It's not yet quilted. Well, let's take a closer look at this because this is a beautiful quilt. I love the colors in it. Um, they're very vibrant. And let's just blow it up a little bit and see what she's talking about, these little squares. Yeah, those are tiny half square triangles. Um, very nicely done though with the colors. And I think this is going to look absolutely gorgeous when you get it quilted. Um, it's not a huge quilt by the looks of things, but that doesn't matter. If it's called a picnic quilt, it's probably big enough for a picnic. So thank you, Jackie, for sharing your very, very beautiful quilting work. So if you would like to have your quilt uh, featured or any sewing uh, project or any craft project, um, Please send me a picture or two. Just a couple is great. Even one is fine. And just a little blurb, a couple of sentences or so, telling me what this project is, why you created it, that kind of thing. I don't need an essay. Just, you know, two, three sentences are fine. Um, I'm running low. I think I've only got one more quilt to feature. That'll be next week. And then I don't have any, which means I'll have to show you mine. And bore you to tears with my stuff. Okay. Is that a threat? Yeah. Um, let's see. Oh yeah. So I was talking about Tracy, Tracy Russell from Whirls and Swirls. Wonderful person, wonderful dealer for an APQS. And we're so lucky that we have her here in our area. You know, I'm really blessed out here with a great dealer, Shirley at Ultimate Sewing, and Tracy as well. You know, really. I know some people live in spots where they don't have any dealers for these things and they have to rely on, you know, traveling several hours to the local one or doing it all online. And really, you need to have a dealer close to you for these kind of things. But uh, I thought I would talk a little bit more about Tracy in terms of her YouTube channel because her YouTube channel is absolutely wonderful. If you're a long arm quilter, and it doesn't matter whether you're using an APQS or a handy quilter or whatever. She has many, many videos about different things you can do with your long arm. Shows you how to do different designs, how to use pantographs, how to do general maintenance, things like that. It is a wealth of knowledge. So I thought I would review her YouTube channel for you so you can see this yourself. This week's YouTube channel of the week is called Whirls and Swirls Quilting. And this is in my area. And Tracy Russell, the owner of Whirls and Swirls and who produces these videos, is a wonderful person. She is an excellent instructor and a great representative for APQS, which is a long arm company in the States. And as you know, I just bought a long arm uh, called Lucy that I bought through uh, Tracy 
uh, at Whirls and Swirls. And Tracy made it so easy to order this. I mean, after all, you're ordering something that came from across the border. And so there are all kinds of complications there. But Tracy has been extremely helpful every step of the way. And I have taken several of Tracy's classes as well in the past. And I have another one coming up soon that will teach me how to use or get the most out of my Lucy long arm. But for anybody out there who has a long arm machine, you need to check out, if you haven't already, her YouTube channel. She has a multitude of excellent instructional videos, as you can see. If we go to her video list and just go down and look at some of the topics, panographs made easy, loading a long arm the easy way, stitch, stitching casings into the leaders or into leaders on the long arm, quilting freehand feather fill, Everybody likes to do feathers, freehand quilting a border. Uh, it just goes on. There is an endless number of uh, YouTube videos here, and they are so professionally done. And Tracy has a real sense of humor as well, so it makes them also entertaining. But she gets right down to business in every one of her videos, and her instructions are step by step and absolutely clear. So if you're struggling with or want to learn more about using your long arm for free motion quilting, then you need to check out Tracy Russell's Whirls and Swirls Quilting YouTube channel. So that takes me to a uh, pattern of the week for my vision board. And uh, I have this one. I've picked out the fabrics for this. It's a panel. Uh, I bought it some time ago. My whole idea was this was going to be an autumn quilt. And it's still going to be an autumn quilt. It's just a question or not whether I get it done this autumn. Uh, and we're into autumn already. Been a little waylaid by my other projects. But uh, I thought I would show you this pattern and talk a little bit more about it. This week's pattern from my vision board is one called Autumn Steam Quilt. Now, I bought this panel online and I'm not sure where I got it from. I think I may have bought it from Peachtree Fabrics out in Regina. I'm not absolutely sure. But when I saw the panel, I really loved it. And I found th this pattern for it. And it comes from a company called ThreeWishesFabric.com. Now, they do not sell this pattern directly. It says available to independent shops only. So you have to find it at one of your favorite fabric stores. And for the life of me, I'm not sure where I got the pattern from. However, I did, and I bought the matching fabric for this uh, as well. And here they do give you fabric requirements and tell you what the name of the fabric uh, is, uh, which is good for searching for this. But it is a panel uh, pattern, and I just think it's really quite uh, interesting. Now, the thing about this pattern is I wanted to make it for this fall, and I have all the fabric ready to go but I haven't gotten to it yet. So I will make it eventually. I just may not be ready before winter. I'm not sure. It is on my project list after I get my uh, Halloween quilt done. But I think it's something a little different. Um, I love the images of the old fashioned steam tra trains on it. And I like the colors because they are very fall, but they're also somewhat untraditional because they're picking up the theme of the steam engine and at the same time using fall, fall colors. So if you're interested in this, I do have a link to this website uh, so you can see the fabric requirements. But as I said, you can't order it from this website. You'll have to do a search uh, to find this particular pattern. So that takes me to the interview of the week, a teaser. It is up in the show note. In the show notes below, you will find the link. And this is for the person that Walter's been taking classes with on a regular basis for, well, well over a year, if not a little bit longer, where he's learned how to make really wonderful shirts and other garments and you have seen many of his creations on so chatty and on Stephen and walter live and the name of this person i've already mentioned is brendan brendan corcoran and uh he's a local guy and his story is kind of interesting um i met brendan a couple of years ago uh we already knew him and he's become a friend um he was coming into Ultimate Sewing when we were there, and uh, he 
was really interested in, he, he was a knitter. And he talks about that in the interview. He was a knitter before, and he was a really good knitter too, as well. But he's always had a desire to make costumes as well. He's very, very creative. But he didn't really know where to start. And I was talking to him about sewing machines. And I said, look, go into Ultimate Sewing, see Shirley, tell her what you want to do. She will set you up with a machine <clears throat> appropriate for what you want to do. So he did, and she did, and my God. His creations are wonderful. Um, you'd think he'd been sewing his whole life. But anyways, I decided he would be appropriate to do an interview with. So I did. So here's a little teaser of that interview. And stuff like that. And I, but I never knew how to thread a sewing machine. But the other side of that was I, at about seven, there was one of our neighbors. She came over to look after us while my parents were on a business trip. And she taught me how to knit. And I did a lot of knitting since about grade two. And at that time, you know, of course you make headbands and you make mittens and you make the real simple things. But over time, especially when I got to university, I started making sweaters. And what's really cool about that is that the pattern pieces of a sweater are very similar to pattern pieces of a shirt or things that you would do in sewing. So even though I didn't have the skills, I had the notion of how the pieces would piece together and come together. And that was from a very younger, young age. Well, I remember you talking before you got into sewing about your knitting and mm -hmm. everything like that. And I saw some of your creations and they were phenomenal as well. Now, are you still knitting? No, it's funny because my I think my first real sewing project was to make a knitting bag. <laughs> it's really funny. So, you know, the bag would have all the million pockets for all the different um, equipment and supplies and notions. And um, it's just, you know, knitting is... What I think what happened is, is that I got old and impatient because it takes about, you know, for the sweaters that I was making, it would take three or four months mm -hmm. to get a sweater together. And I, I just, I, I wanted to exercise my creative side and start developing patterns, but it took so long to see the results of your creation that I was getting frustrated and just wasn't getting satisfied. Whereas with sewing, it's so great because I can, within a week, usually about a week, I can see, oh, that worked out, or oh, that doesn't look so great. But you get that turnaround very quickly, and you can move on to the next creative piece. Now, as I said, if you want to see the full interview, it is in the Idiot Quilter Presents, and there's a link for it in the show notes uh, below. Um, yeah, so guess what? That was my last interview. I don't have any interviews scheduled. So I'm begging you, come on, people, you've seen them. You know that I don't bite people's heads off, that I'm only supportive uh, with them. They're interesting. You are an interesting person. You are unique. So I want to interview you. And again, it is not limited to quilters. If you are an artist of any so sort, if you're a crafter, and I also consider crafters artists anyway, so it's one and the same, then I want to hear from you. We'll set it up. It's absolutely painless. Let's get your 15 minutes of fame, such as it is here on this channel, um, because I have nothing for next week. Nothing. So please, please let me know if you're interested in being interviewed. I'll send you the questions. You're free to alter them in any way you see fit. And uh, I guarantee you, you will look great. I will make you look great, like as if I have to. You're all great. Okay, so moving on, that brings me to uh, one of my quilts. I call it Ticky Tacky Little Houses. You have seen this. I showed it to you when it was first finished, but this is where I get uh, upfront and personal with it. This week's quilt that I'm going to critique, which is my own is one that you saw probably a month or two ago on the idiot quilter while i was working on it this one i am particularly proud of for several reasons first of all i had a lot of problems with this pattern this pattern came from missouri star quilt and it was originally called jenny's lane and when i was making the blocks i found that i was out by a quarter of an inch and I thought it was me. And I did all kinds of things to check on this. I did one block um, 
I measured it as I went. I made sure that I was cutting accurately. I even double checked my seam allowance or the setup of my needle on my sewing machine for the quarter inch seam allowance and uh, for accuracy. And it was so I couldn't figure this out, but I figured if I'm out by a quarter of an inch uh, on each block, then it's all going to go together. OK, and it did. Um, I did have to do a little bit of, of trimming here and there to get it all to fit together, but I did get it to fit together. So this is the end result. Now, I call this quilt Ticky Tacky Little Houses. And I am especially proud of the fact that I overcame the mistake that was in the pattern. And I think it was a mistake because I watched Jenny's video about how to put this together. And she was also out a little bit on the blocks, but she skipped over that very quickly and didn't say anything about it. So maybe she discovered that there was a slight error as well. I don't know. But either way, it turned out. So I'm also proud of this because I did free motion quilting for the most part on this quilt on my domestic machine. And I just decided I was throwing all caution to the wind it would be whatever it would be. I wasn't worried about perfection, but I think it looks pretty good. Now let's take a little closer look at the quilting. And I started out quilting this uh, using some rulers. Up here you can see I used a straight ruler and I used a wavy ruler. And that was my original intention. And I used a straight ruler here as well, but it was taking me forever to do that. So I abandoned the ruler after this row and just went for free motion. And of course, you can see here, let's just look a little closer, that it's certainly not perfect, but it's quilted. I don't think I ended up with any tucks in this, but that's because I pinned, spray basted it and pin basted it, the uh, layers together. So overall, I think it turned out really nice. Just imagine what I could do with this quilt again if I used my long arm now that I have it. But of course, at the time, I didn't have the long arm. Uh, it is not wavy down here, okay? It's just the way that this quilt is hanging up for display, as you can see. So yes, I'm very proud of this quilt. I'm very happy with it. But just beware if you do this particular pattern from Missouri Star Quilt, don't worry if you're out by a bit of a quarter of an inch because that's in the pattern. And that takes us to the online uh, quilting store uh, of the week. And this one is called Lori's Country Kitchen. And you know, this is a Canadian one because I just feature Canadian ones. Sorry to my American viewers. But you know, we have more quilting stores in this country than I realized since I started this segment and they need to be put out there. People need to know about them because we have some great ones. Everybody knows about the ones in the States because they have a much bigger presence for some reason than our Canadian stores. So this is the one I, I want to talk about this week. It's called Lori's Country Kitchen and I'm going to insert my review of it here. This week's online fabric store is called Lori's Country Cottage, and I have never visited this one in uh, real time. And so I'm judging this review on what I see here for the first time on their website. This is an interesting store that's located in a place called Sherwood Park, Alberta. And Alberta seems to have quite a variety of quilting stores I have found, at least they do online. So let's just look at their first page, their front page. So, quilting essentials, everything you need. Featured line, Halloween fabric. Ooh, some nice stuff here. And it looks like they're charging about $20. Uh, I don't know if that's a yard or a meter. Let's take a look. Quantity. Okay. 100% cotton it says, but I'm still not sure if this is in Hmm, interesting. It doesn't tell me here anyways whether this is in um meters or in yardage. So 
Hmm, we'll have to see, but let's move on. We might come across what that really is later on. So here they have all their featured fabrics on the front page. Click here on the picture to register for their Fab Shop Pop. Uh, then they've got pre-cuts. I've got K-Facet Notions. Looks like a picture of a class that has come up. We'll check out classes in a minute. Featured projects. Looks like kits that you can get. They're featuring Christmas things right now. Um, what else do we have here? New in store. So there's a lot to grab your interest right off the bat on the front page. They looks like they do have a physical store because they have an address and they have store hours. Let's take a look at what they say ab about us. Um, yes, they're talking about, you know, a little introductory blurb where they're located. Um, owner is Lori Oseka. I'm not sure how you say her name. Uh, in 1993, as a fabric store, she opened it. So it's been around for a while. The store featured dressmaking fabrics and a handful of quilting fabrics and tools. In the process of setting up her business, a sales representative predicted the store would evolve into a quilt shop before the year was up. He was right. After replacing the dressmaking fabric with quilting fabric and replenishing the quilting supplies, that's exactly what happened. Um, and there's a little bit more about Lori if you're interested. It looks like they were on, uh, they were honored and proud to have been chosen from 3,000 eligible shops as a Better Homes and Gardens quilt sampler top 10 quilt shop. Okay, well, that's good to know. So they're award winning. Um, let's take a look at their shipping terms while we're in this section. Free shipping within Canada on orders over $200. If shipping charges are over $40, lorries will cover the first $40 and the remainder will be added to your order. Um, when I first saw this kind of thing on some other websites, I thought that was unusual, but I now I'm seeing that as oops, something that's very re regular um, on here. So yeah, here's their postage order value. So if you're in the US, it's going to cost you $11 and I imagine that's Canadian dollars, six in Canada. And it goes up from there. So uh, over $200 in Canada, it's free. But in the States, it's $39. Uh, and it's actual postage for international. So it looks like they do ship overseas as well. Um, let's just go back for a second. And anything else here we're interested in? Uh, nope. So let's check out their other fabrics. We checked out their featured fabrics for Halloween. So what do we got? Batiks, batting, children's cork, fabric blenders, interfacing, flannel, pre-cuts, seasonal fabrics, themes, wide backing. Yeah, here they've got all what you would expect them to have. But let's check out their batiks. Because I love batiks. Um, yeah, I have seen these before. Nothing really here screaming at me that this is uh, unique to their store, but that's okay. Expensive, $23.99, $22.99. Again, I don't know if that's a meter or a yard. Um, do they say anything at the top of the page about this on fabrics? Uh, not really. I'm still not sure if I'm getting a yard or I'm getting a meter. Okay. So if that's here somewhere, I haven't been able to find it. Uh, let's take a look at notions. Bag making, cutting accessories, fabric care, garments. Garments. Hmm, interesting. Let's go to garments. And it looks like they only have two products and they're baby body suits. I don't know what a baby body suit is, but maybe you do. Um, let's go back to notions again. Um... Let's just look at sewing accessories and see what we have here. And oops, here we go. Okay. Uh, flying bell curve, high shank. It looks like they have rulers. They're westerly rulers. Um, pins, acorn uh, precision pressing and uh, gluing solutions. Uh, tote bag. Ah, alligator clamps. These are great. I, 
I think I've mentioned those before in a previous video that I use those when I do uh, freestanding lace embroidery. They're very, very handy. And yeah, they seem to have the usual kind of things. An applique pressing sheet, uh, applique glitter sheet. Hmm, interesting. I'm not sure what that is. So let's go over to their kits and things. Get back down here. They have a block of the month. Okay, baby throw, lap quilt. Let's look at king size and queen size. And they have only one moonlight block. Um, full kit, $474.99. Not cheap, but then kits aren't. And that is a queen size, king size quilt. Nice pattern, though. Kind of like that. Um, okay. Let's check out classes and see how they're running those. So, class pass gold, Lori's cut. Okay, this is something they give you a card. Maybe that gets you so many classes. I don't know. Um, does it explain? On sale September 30th, 2021, valid for three classes, each valued under $100. Lori reserves the right to revoke the class pass pass if two sessions are missed okay so that's interesting they have these and say for under a hundred dollars that's the gold one okay well you can take three that's a good value and this one 175 and for all the classes you want so unlimited so that's not bad but are there classes in person or are they virtual? I seem to have quite a few classes. And I think, oh, I made that quilt. Um, it looks to me like if you got the $175 pass, if you're going to take more than three classes, it might be worth it because some of these classes are $125 a piece. So... That's okay, but I still don't know whether or not these classes are online or in person. Minimum enrollment is not met. We reserve the right to cancel a class. Okay, it, it looks to me like their classes are in person. Uh, it says something up here. Um, proof of vaccination. Single dose two weeks prior to date of entry, double vaccination, negative COVID. So they're taking the whole COVID thing very serious. That's nice to see. So I guess they are in-person classes. It doesn't look like they have any online. They have something called Happenings Events. 2021's fall classes, 12 days of Christmas, anniversary temperature sale, whatever that is, annual birthday sale. Okay, so they've got a lot of things happening on here as well. Cottage News. Looks like they have a little, uh, probably it's a newsletter. And Facebook Live Video. So they do have videos as well. Uh, travel and Retreats. Um, okay, this is interesting. Uh, an Amish Country Spring Tour. Filters Escape, looks like a cruise, and their different retreats. So they seem to offer quite a lot on here. Um, I wish I knew for sure whether or not the fabric is in meters or yardage. Um, Price-wise, they're a little bit more on the higher side, just from the first things that I looked at. Um, yeah, so I would say that Lori's Country Kitchen based or country kitchen or it's country cottage i mean is really worth looking into um they have a good variety of fabrics and yeah prices are well maybe a little high but i'm spoiled from so where i that go. brings me to the end of this week's episode just a reminder about craft and chat coming up october the 6th which is tomorrow when this is being recorded um, at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Zoom links are in the show notes below, so I hope to see you then. And I hope you have a really creative week, and I hope it's a good week for you. And we'll see you next week. So bye-bye for now.